I was in the shop, my phone went, and it was my girlfriend. She was on a boat down by Abporth. She'd seen someone falling out of a boat and the boat carrying on without anybody in it. Next thing, the pager goes off, so I run down to the boathouse. I know what's going on, so I'm informing a couple of the people that were there what's, uh, what's happening. Five miles away, a speedboat is running out of control. The immediate risk to life and limb means the inshore lifeboat launches with just two crew on board. This was bank holiday, a stunning day, flat calm, all the beaches, they'll all be chock-a-block. People will be swimming. If that boat heads towards those beaches, it's likely to cause someone a lot of damage. It could even head up the beach and start hitting people, depending on the speed of the craft. The boat is at least 20 minutes away and there's still no news about its occupants. If they're in the water, every minute's delay increases the risk of them being hit by the vessel or its propeller. Is anybody who's fallen out of the boat in the path of this out-of-control boat? You might dodge it once, you might dodge it twice, but it's, it's going to keep coming. After a frantic dash down the coast, the crew approached the area where the boat was last spotted. Once we got past Langranog and Treithbach, we could see the boat going around in, uh, in, in circles. I'm not afraid, Nick Obi. We're on scene. Just to inform you, the vessel's going around in circles. Speed approximately four or five knots. The Coast Guard informs the crew the rib skipper has been picked up by another vessel uninjured. But the boat is now dangerously out of control. Once the Coast Guard told me that the casualty was safe, immediately that was out of my mind. Um, however, I looked at the beach, and the beach was particularly close. I was quite shocked at how, how close we were to the beach. Speed approximately four or five knots, and it's uh, 200 yards off the beach, over. The crew must now work out how to stop the boat without risk to the holiday makers on the nearby beaches. They probably wouldn't be able to see what was going on. Maybe they thought someone was, was messing around in their boat, just going round and round out there. So maybe they'd come even closer to have a, have a closer look. Lifeboat crews train for most eventualities at sea, but Brett has never come up against a situation like this. I've always thought about what you'd do um, if, you, if you met a boat that was out of control. It is a little bit like some sort of rodeo experience. You need to be able to drive that boat particularly well to get close to it and, and, and not put you and your crew in danger. Once you get near that boat, then it's got a chance to ride up on top of you. Obviously, we're not protected from a spinning propeller. Brett's plan is to get close enough to drop some rope into the water to entangle the propeller, stall the engine and bring the boat under control. But if he gets his timing wrong or hits the boat, he could send it careering off towards the people on the beach at full speed. So I decided that I would take these oval curves around it. Every time it did maybe three revolutions, I'd, I'd meet it once and, and try and just see if we can get in front of it. So I did that two, maybe three times. On that third time, I clipped the back end of the boat. That suddenly straightened the engine up. It was now headed straight towards uh, that packed beach. At the speed that that boat was going, it would have only been 30 seconds and it would have been up the beach. I knew I had to stop it somehow. I just throttled on as hard as I could when we got alongside it. Simon jumped on board. Just a few seconds away from the shore, Simon gets the runaway boat under control. I've never jumped in an unmanned boat before, especially at speed. But at that time, I had no choice, and I was willing to put myself at risk to save other people getting hurt. Once that boat straightened up and started heading towards the beach, that was because of us. 
we just sent this missile over without those people knowing it was coming. So instantly I knew I had to, had to stop it somehow. It was just massive, massive relief and, and a bit of a, a bit of a sort of Yahoo moment.